Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go through problem 16. In problem 16, it says a particle moves along the x-axis with, with its position at time t given by x of t equals t minus a times t minus b, where a and b are constants and a is not equal to b. This is important. A is distinct from b, which, which means that um, x of t cannot be written as a repeated root with a repeated root t minus a squared, right? You can't write it like that. that that's what it's saying. Okay, that's cool. Um, so there is that, and then it says, for which of the following values of t is the particle at rest? This is pretty straightforward. So because you're given the position at time t, which is x of t, um, to figure out where the particle is at rest, you need to get to v of t, the velocity, um, which would be the derivative of position, and set that equal to zero, because the velocity is zero is when the particle is at rest. And you could go about that task um, in two manners. One is to uh, view x of t, the function you're given, as a product of two functions, um, f of t and g of t, where f of t and g of t are the linear functions t minus a and t minus b respectively. And so if you do product there, um, x prime of t is going to say the derivative of f of t, uh, which is, well, since f of t is t minus a, the derivative of that is just 1, times g of t, which is t minus b, plus um, f of t, which is t minus a, times the derivative of g of t. Since g of t is t minus b, its derivative is 1. And so this is kind of a weird way to do this, but t it's cool. t minus b plus t minus a. And since this is x prime of t, which is v of t, and this is what we want to equal 0, we set it equal to 0, and solve to find that 2t will have to equal a plus b. Therefore, t, which is where the particle is at rest, is a plus b divided by 2. Another reason why it's important to pay attention to a not equaling b is because if a and b were equal, this would have turned to 2a over um, 2, therefore it would have just simply been a, which is, again, not the answer. Um, instead, the answer is a plus b over 2. And, of course, the other way that you could have gone about this is by first multiplying that out and turning it into a quadratic, and then taking the derivative um, from there. So I'll just do that very quickly. So if we uh, distribute, we're going to get t squared. I was going to say foil and I refrained. Um, appropriately. So minus bt, because it's really distributive property, minus at, and then plus ab. Okay, so this is uh, the position um, function. So x prime of t, which is a velocity function, is going to equal 2t. And here I'll write the position uh, function slightly conveniently with a factored form, which is um, minus um, a plus b times t and then plus a b you could check that that's this this here is identical to those two middle terms so we're good okay so 2t and it's, it's just easier to take the derivative of this fella sorry i circled poorly but uh this guy yeah it's easier to take the derivative of that guy so i'll just do that and so 2t and then it's um since this is just negative a times a times uh, sorry, negative a plus b times t, and negative a plus b is the constant. I'm just going to get that constant, which is negative a plus b. Sorry about that. Negative a plus b. And the t goes away, right? And this is a constant, so that goes away. So this is what I want to equal 0. And so then 2t will have to equal a plus b, adding a plus b to both sides. So t will have to be a plus b over 2. By the way, I'm sorry if I confused you by uh, this little factoring. First of all, you should be comfortable with that because you're in calculus. But if you um, were uncomfortable with that, you could have taken the derivative here and that's fine. You'd get to the same place, right? Okay, perhaps easier in some ways. Um, okay, cool. So I hope this helps. Take care.